We are talking about the slasher movie, The Butchering, which is also known as Braxton Butcher, also known as simply Braxton. This one is directed and written by Leo, great name there, McGuian, and is a low budget Irish screen knockoff. Now I say specifically screen rather than just a generic slasher because it does feel like it's really so influenced by the original sort of screen movies and its sequels. So the story here initially sets place in this kind of uh, this Irish community and there is a massacre uh, with this kind of masked killer going in this kind of party killing, killing a bunch of people and we have a couple of survivors. Um, cut to 10 years later and it's the anniversary of the killings and there seems to be uh, this killer has returned perhaps or it could be a copycat anyway the killings start anew and the remaining survivors and a whole bunch of new people are obviously affected by the killings and it focuses on uh, a few different people really uh, who kind of uh, mainly on this kind of cop who was one of the survivors from the original massacre and then trying to figure out you know who's behind it is it the same guy or is it something else entirely so let's talk the butchering this is a low budget movie um, and it is, it's, it's purely an Irish cast. Now I will say I'm from the UK. Sometimes I've got to say it's kind of hard to understand them. Now, being in the UK, come across Irish people quite a lot, but I still found it quite difficult to understand. So people who are maybe English isn't the first language or even, even in the States maybe, I feel sometimes this will be a little bit difficult to understand because there's a lot of uh, sort of local colloquialisms and that sort of thing and just their actors are very strong so it's a little bit hard to understand. The movie also has a weirdly, is weirdly paced and has an odd tone where it can't decide what it wants to be. So it, it wants to be kind of one part slash of one part kind of teen drama and it almost feels like you're watching one of these kind of like, I don't know if anyone will know this kind of thing, but I mean, but like Grange Hill or Dawson's Creek, this kind of, these kind of teen dramas that you've got with all people having relationships and stuff like that and kind of interpersonal issues and all that sort of thing and love lives. And I suppose it's, most of it's running time actually dealing with these things rather than the actual killings themselves. And a lot of time within this movie, the serial killer aspect is actually kind of pushed to the, to the side in favour of having these kind of relationship dramas. But here's the thing that really bothered me about this movie. Is this is a, in a town, so I'm not quite sure where it is, but it's obviously a reasonably small place. And we have a lot of killing going on, but the teenagers seem so nonplussed about it all. And we have characters that are meant to be friends of these people. And in the next scenes, we've got the kind of the same people joking and kind of laughing. When their friends have just been killed, it's ridiculous. I mean, let's be honest, we're talking 2018 here, and we've got people kicking off and, you know, being offended about the slightest little thing and, you know, complaining about it on the internet all the time. When we have your friends are getting murdered and there's, a, you know, a serial killer in the loot in the small town, people are just kind of like, oh, they're just concerned about their relationship issues and things like that. It's ridiculous, ridiculous. Uh, so this sets this really weird tone that I don't know where the movie is that it, want, it thinks it's going. The actual killings themselves are particularly disappointing, I will say. Uh, there's nothing really particularly graphic on screen. The kind of the, the mask killer looks okay, uh, I will say. It's kind of like um, cross between um, Michael Myers and the killer from Urban Legend wearing a Parker coat and all of that. But <clears throat> the actual kills themselves are very kind of just slashing across the throats and stuff like that. There is quite a high body count in this movie, so if, if you do like plenty of killing, then this may be one for you. Uh, the acting as well is, is kind of on the weaker side from a lot of the cast here. Get the impression that a lot of this cast, it's maybe their first time gigs or they're straight out of drama college and stuff like that. I do like the fact that they cast, they seem to cast very just natural looking teenagers rather than having your typical kind of super glammed up kind of like typical Hollywood style kind of actresses and actors that you have here. They just seem kind of like regular looking people rather than being too super glamorous. So I did kind of like that aspect to it. And this movie does try and do something, kind of, you know, having a kind of a, a, a mystery in it involved as well. Uh, and a kind of a reveal about kind of what's happened. But it's, it's so kind of um, takes those, the cues of Scream. Uh, you know, trying to find out who the killer is and all that sort of thing. It just seems like really like, such a direct rip-off from Scream. 
that unfortunately I can't give it props for being original because it isn't. Um, so overall, I've got to say, this although it, uh, this isn't a terrible slasher film, there's nothing really to kind of really mark it above any any other kind of lower budget slasher film. But it's been so much time on these uh, relationships and pe things that probably people are interested in if they're watching a slasher movie, you know, to a point. But it just feels a lot of it is unnecessary and too many characters having too many personal demons and, and with situations you simply don't care about and you can't take it seriously because these guys aren't taking it seriously. So I want to give this movie a 3 out of 10. It's kind of uh, a little bit of a slog. So have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to it next time. Bye for now.